So while 90% of the videos in my Szechuan School series can be cooked using my beginner pantry guide, I just wanted to expand upon some of the more specialized ingredients if you happen to be getting really into Szechuan cooking. I'll have a bunch of links to the stuff I'm talking about in the description below, so definitely check that out. And without further ado, I'm gonna to toss you on the top of my head and we're gonna talk about all this stuff. First up, we've got some white peppercorns here. Uh, black peppercorns are made by drying unripe berries from the plant, uh, and they still have their outer skins attached, which kind of gives it that flavor profile. Uh, these white peppercorns are actually fermented, they're soaked in water, there's a little bit more going on, and they're fully ripe berries from the same plant. So uh, the flavor profile is a little bit different, um, and it's really necessary for hot and sour soup. Um, that's really when you're going to want to pick up a bottle of these. Uh, next, I've got these green Szechuan peppercorns. Um, these are really interesting. I didn't really buy into the hype of um, the green Szechuan peppercorns. I kind of just thought it was maybe a marketing gimmick or something, but these are really cool. Um, they're super citrusy. Um, I think they're a little bit less numbing, in uh, I found, in my opinion. Uh, than the red counterparts, uh, but they have a really, really great flavor. They're definitely different. Um, I'd really recommend picking it up if you're into the Szechuan peppercorn thing. Um, these were really great. Um, next up, we've got a really fun spice. This is black cardamom. Uh, this is really great. Um, if you were gonna pick up anything else um, in addition to that basic video, I really think you should get these. Um, these are actually dried over an open fire. Um, so they have this really great smoky, um, kind of like backyard barbecue flavor to them. They're really crazy tasting. Um, and what you do is you crack these open when you use them. Um, I think I have a couple loose seeds in here. There's these little seeds inside. Um, and that's where you get the menthol -y flavor from, is uh, these little guys right here, like in typical cardamom. But then you get all that, those smoky flavors from the exterior. Um, it's really great. Next, we've just got kind of like a bunch of spices I'm gonna rattle off that are useful to have around. Um, we've got bay leaves, cumin, coriander or cilantro seeds, um, and fennel seeds. Um, these are great for, you know, putting into your hot oil or into your infused uh, soy sauces or, you know, there's the cumin beef that's a really popular stir fry recipe. Uh, you know, uh, just helpful to have around, but you don't need to have any of that. Um, and then here we've got white and black sesame seeds. Great to have around, great nutty flavor. Um, the, ses the black sesame seeds are typically used in desserts. They're really nutty tasting. Um, yeah, they're good, so you could pick those up. Um, and then I've got two, uh, I guess they're not spices, but just more dry goods that are helpful to have. Um, this first one's MSG. I'm sure you're familiar with this, with all the controversies of it, but I cook with it all the time. Um, I'll link something in the description that talks about the health side effects. I think it's really, really blown out of proportion when you think about all the other food additives we ingest all the time in the States. So um, yeah, it, it's great, brings a lot of umami flavor. Um, and then you've got baking soda. Um, I actually use this quite a lot when I'm cooking Szechuan food. Um, it's an alkaline uh, cooking material, which is pretty rare um, in the, as far as cooking ingredients go. There's really not that many. You know, this and egg whites are the common ones. Uh, but it's really great for tenderizing meat for stir fries and also for cooking noodles. Um, if you want like a really chewy alkaline noodle texture, you can toss some of this in with your cooking liquid for like Don Don noodles. Um, you can use this stuff. Um, it's really great. And uh, one more thing I want to talk about is, so in my last video, I'm actually out of this right now, but in my last video I talked about how facing heaven chilies are the most versatile. And yeah, they definitely are the most versatile if you're just gonna buy one variety. But um, I'll throw a picture up here, but um, these other chilies, they're called Erjing Chow chilies, um, which is butchering the pronunciation, but um, they're actually my favorite dried chili I've ever had. They're uh, like a long uh, cayenne variety, I believe. Um, but they've just, they're pretty mild and they just got this like incredible fruity flavor to them. 
Um, it's really gonna up your hot oil game. Um, so I think that's it for the dry goods. Yeah, that's about it. So I'm gonna cover up the camera here. And when I take my hand off, we're gonna have all of the uh, wet goods, sauces, uh, just like mis miscellaneous items um, that I think are really great to pick up. Um, we're gonna start with some fats over here. Um, so in the previous video, I said, you know, any neutral oil is good. Um, my favorite is this. This is some peanut oil, refined peanut oil. Um, it's great for stir frying, deep frying. Um, it's got a high uh, smoke point. Uh, it's very neutral flavored. Um, and it's pretty high in saturated fat percentage. Uh, versus other typical vegetable oils. Uh, so that makes it good for deep frying. Um, I'll link something with the science behind that in the description. Just make sure if you're shopping for that, you don't want this expensive cold pressed peanut oil. Um, this tastes like peanuts uh, and it's great for making, you know, cold noodle dishes, um, but it's not what you want to be frying in. Moving on here, I've got some pork lard. Um, this is rendered pork fat. It's used all the time um, in Szechuan cooking, Chinese cooking in general. Uh, let's see if I can get you a shot in there. Let me scoop some out of here. Um, just adds um, a really rich um, flavor to whatever you're cooking. Um, it's really, really great. Uh, I've got a video on how to make that. Um, again, all this stuff is gonna be linked below, not to keep saying that. Um, and this is, this is something that's super special here. Um, this is from the Mala Market. Um, it's the only place I've been able to find it in the States. Um, this is a roasted rapeseed oil. Um, we're used to having rapeseed oil as canola oil, which is a super neutral um, veggie oil. I'm sure you've all cooked with it before. But this is an unrefined canola oil. Um, it's, race, it's roasted, like I said, so it's got this really deep, hue to it um, and it's got this incredible nutty flavor to it. It's really fantastic. Um, you'd use it kind of like olive oil and Chinese Cooking Demystified's YouTube channel says that this is often used in um, traditional hot oils. Um, this is a little too pricey uh, in the States to be used for that. So I just use it for stir frying. Uh, but yeah, you could try uh, making a chili oil with it. I'm sure it's uh, delicious. Um, I wanted to talk to you about a few different kinds of vinegar next. I cook with a lot of rice wine vinegar for you know typically cold salads, like cold mushroom salads. Um, but what I like to do is I make this infused rice wine vinegar here. Um, this has cilantro and a bunch of aromatic spices in it. It's really, really tasty, um, really ups your rice wine vinegar game. Um, again, links in the description for that. Here's also something extremely special. Um, this is a bounding vinegar, um, also from the Mala Market. Um, and this, this vinegar is incredible. Uh, it's pricey, it's really pricey. I think this was 25 bucks, but I've had it for, I wanna say at least three or four months now. And I cook Szechuan food all the time and I've hardly used any of it. So I'm definitely getting my money's worth. It's a 10 year vinegar made from a whole bunch of different stuff. There's rice bran, uh, wheat, corn, sorghum, buckwheat, all different kinds of stuff. Um, this is an incredible vinegar. I r really recommend picking this up. And here I've just got a bunch of kind of miscellaneous items here. Um, I think it's, these are all fermented. So let's just say these are fermented things. Let's uh, go with that. Um, I'm gonna start with these fermented pastes. Um, I actually ran out of one of them, which is oyster sauce. That's probably the most familiar. Um, to everybody. Um, but we've also got these two, uh, hoisin sauce, and this is called sweet wheat paste. Um, this is like a really dark uh, fermented wheat paste. Um, very, very rich in umami flavors. Um, just a little bit goes a long way. Um, the hoisin sauce is a little bit sweeter, um, and they have different applications. Um, I've got recipes using both of these. So you can kind of figure out what the flavor profile is best for, um, along with the oyster sauce, which is great with, um, with beef. Um, here we've got some, these are called fermented black beans in English. Um, but that's really a misnomer. These are actually soybeans that have been fermented until they're black. Um, 
But these are super salty little guys. Um, some people compare them to like Parmesan cheese, uh, sort of, like in terms of the funk that they bring to a dish. Uh, they're really great, used in a lot of twice cooked dishes. Uh, yeah, they're great. They were super tasty. So I wanna talk about sambal alec and pickled chilies in general uh, next. So this is easily found, you can find this in basically any grocery store. You don't even need to go to a specialty uh, Asian grocery store. Uh, it's really good for if you just want to get one thing and you could swap this in for a lot of different recipes if they're calling for pickled chilies. Um, the other two common pickled chili varieties, which I actually ran out of, I don't have, are that Erjing Chow chili I talked about earlier. And there's also this other chili. Um, let me look at my notes here. Um, they're these little small green, really spicy chilies. Um, that are commonly pickled. Um, oh yeah, they're called wild mountain chilies. Um, those are also really great. You can find those in Chinese supply stores um, as well. I'll put, I'll throw a picture up here. But yeah, those can be both be a little bit hard to find. So just get a bottle of this if you can't track them down and swap it out. Works great. <clears throat> and these are the last thing I want to talk to you guys about. Um, these are pickled and fermented mustard greens. Uh, they're called something along the lines of Yibin Yakai. I know I'm butchering that pronunciation, um, but they're super interesting, the fermentation process for this. Uh, I'll link something below, but it involves harvesting at a specific point in a lunar cycle and drying and multiple stages of fermentation and boiling with sugar. Um, it just yields this really great product. Um, it's used a lot in dandan noodles and also in... Uh, green beans, the um, dry fried uh, green beans. Um, so it's a really great flavor. You can make something similar by lacto-fermenting basically any mustardy type green. Um, but yeah, they're great. And um, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, don't forget to peep at those links I talked about in the description um, and check out the rest of my Szechuan School series. Later, nerds. Fresh toast, fresh toast kitchen. Fresh toast, fresh toast kitchen. It's hard to say.